What's up, y'all? I'm gonna talk a little bit about my experience in Knox County Jail detoxing on fentanyl. Um, <laughs> so, at the time of my arrest, I was me and my wife were were doing probably anywhere from like three to five grams of uh, some high quality fentanyl a day. Um, so I was kind of deep into drug addiction at at that point. They, uh, you know, they raided my hotel room. Um, found all this counterfeiting equipment. The Secret Service was there, uh, Drug Task Force, KPD, Knox County Sheriff, Organized Crime Unit. Um, you know, they, uh, the, the Drug Task Force guy, of course, tries to sit down and talk with me and asks me, oh, we know you're dealing with all these high-level heroin traffickers, you know, who, who, are, who are you dealing with? We already know this and that. And basically, at that point, I knew the jig was up they found all this evidence for counterfeiting. You know, I just tell the guy, like, I want to talk to a lawyer. Um, and that pissed him off. Of course, he storms out. And they escort me down to the paddy wagon. You know, everybody in the hotel is with the door open watching me. I'm, you know, in handcuffs walking down. This fucking embarrassing shit. Um, you know, they, they already had a paddy wagon in the parking lot. So they, uh, they put me in it. Um, my wife is in the, the opposite side with the female side so I couldn't see her but I knew she was in the back um you know and she tells me she's like oh it's E E's the one that set set us up blah 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 you know what I mean she was telling me um you know kind of what the secret service agent was talking to her about how you know E is the one from Cleveland that set me up um you know I'm uh you know, the paddy wagon was sitting down there for a while, I guess, by the time I got down there. There was another guy in there, all pissed off, because he's been sitting in this hot-ass steel box, <laughs> you know, for two hours. Um, you know, they take us to uh, Knox County uh, Jail, the, the penal farm is what they, they call it, the DF. Um, it's on the east side of, of Knoxville, you know, go into uh, intake they, you know, strip search you, dress you out, put you in a little holding cell. Um, and at that point, I knew my wife was arrested as well. Um, I wasn't about to call my parents. I knew that the feds were going to pick this up, so I wouldn't be able to bond out. Um, so, yeah, I didn't use the phones. I started to feel shitty off detoxing, off the, off the fentanyl. So, I mean... Anybody who's been in that situation, or at least coming off dope in county jail, no, I mean, you just, there's no place to sit, because there's like 40 guys in this little room with just benches around the perimeter, so I just, you know, sit on the ground, <laughs> you know, or sit there for 12 hours. By the time those 12 hours are up, I'm starting to feel real shitty. I'm starting to come off of this fentanyl. You know, eventually they call all these names. My name was on the list. I get up. They, they walk us down these long corridors to uh in knox county jail at c pod where they do classification which basically they just lock you down for 23 and 1 right? not even like really you're lucky to get out for an hour every two days really it's kind of for them to classify you um as far as what security level you'll you'll be going into which pod um and obviously they know that the majority of people just getting into county jail or coming off of drugs so they basically just lock you in this room to detox um and see if you're going to cause any problems kick the door get into a fight whatever they just classification um you know of course they put me in this room i'm at this point you know probably 12 15 hours in into jail i'm starting to feel shitty off of this this dope i was doing um you know i go into a a little cell is probably like an 8x10, you know, your standard prison cell, jail cell. There's two bunks and then a boat on the ground. Um, you know, when you first get in, obviously, like, there's other people on the bunks. I go to the boat, sit down, it's fucking the toilet's right here. You're laying down right next to it. It's fucking miserable. In this little 8x10 cell uh, with two other guys. Um, I was in there with this one other guy who... who you know, after a day or two of feeling miserable, detoxing, we finally talk for the first time. 
and this guy mentions, oh, I'm in here for criminal simulation. <clears throat> and that was my original charge in the state before the feds picked it up. So I was like, I was thinking like, oh, this is, they put me in here with this guy on purpose. So maybe we talk about our crimes. They've got a fucking microphone in all the cells, an intercom system. So <clears throat> I was nervous, paranoid, you know, afraid to talk about my case, detoxing off this dope, all this crazy shit. <laughs> um, you know, I sit in this uh, C-pod classification for, I think it was probably like about 26 days. Finally, they, uh, they you know, call my name again, pack your shit, go to, uh, I believe it was A-pod, I want to say. Um, go to the, is like the general population. Um, so I go to A-unit, I think it was like A-2 or some, some shit, I don't remember, but... Um, you know, I, I go, go in there and, uh, you know, I don't, I, the feds haven't indicted me yet. So in, in Knox County, I think they've changed it since then, but back then there was like a color code. If you're wearing red, you're in classification. If you're like blue, you're work in the kitchen, which means you kind of have a little more access to walk, you know, the, the halls or whatever. Um, if you, uh. What was it? I think brown is minimum security, orange is medium, black and white striped is max, and then the peanut butter color is federal. So I first went into the unit. I'm still wearing my classification reds, um, which, you know, when you go into county jail, they give you slides that are fucking not your size. You know, they probably give you either a, a jumpsuit that's either two sizes too big or two sizes too small. So it's just like the... I think it's designed to be just the most uncomfortable experience imaginable, you know what I mean? I finally go into the unit, though. Um, go to my cell. It's this uh, one white dude and a black dude. The black dude was, I think his name was C-Note. He was from Detroit. Um, and then the white dude, we all called him Goku because he was like this goofy dude with like Pokemon tattoos or some shit. Um, but we'd always play chess together and stuff. After... After a few days of being in there, um, this big black dude with dreadlocks, his name was Copeland, he's a cool motherfucker, dude, he, uh, somebody mentioned to me, oh, you, your charges are criminal simulation, talk to Copeland, his, his charges are criminal simulation, so I was like, okay, we go up to him, and I was like, hey, somebody told me to talk to you, he was like, yeah, we start talking a little bit, he's like, yeah, criminal simulation, it's, a." Uh, what was it? He's like a class D felony. And I was like, well, no, it's a, it's a class B. And he goes, no, it's a class D. He goes, that's the charge I have. And I said, well, mine's a class B. I said, it's criminal simulation over $60,000. So that caught his attention. He was like, oh, what the fuck were you doing? I was like, counterfeiting money is, is what I allegedly, you know, what my charge is for. Um, so apparently he was counterfeiting checks. Uh, so he'd like find somebody that was like working at McDonald's when they got their payroll check he would copy the account number and routing number off of McDonald's payroll account print counterfeit checks to that and you know have people cash them or whatever um, I guess he did it for a while they finally caught up with him he was taking it to trial um, you know and I, I haven't spoke to him since uh, since I was locked up with him but you know, he was interested in the counterfeiting money thing, so we'd, we'd always talk and bullshit, and he was like the, the chess champion of the pod. He was really good at chess, so we'd play chess every day, um, and he taught me a lot about playing chess in the, like, four months that I was locked up with him, but uh, he was a cool dude. Um, you know, Knox County, once you get in the pod, there's like a little, each pod, or there's a little rec yard in between two pods so two pods share one little rec yard but only one can go in at a time and it's basically just cement walls with a little sunroof i think it's kind of your standard county jail setup um knox county penal farm was built originally to be a federal a max security federal prison but i guess for whatever reason like the community voted against it, so they just turned it into another county jail. So you've got two county jails in Knox County. You've got KCJ downtown, Knox County Jail, and then KCDF, the detention facility, which everybody calls it the penal farm on the east side. Um, and I was at the DF uh, 
um, Knox County, uh, K KCJ downtown is a much older jail. That's where they house all the max security inmates. That's where you go to court. So when you go to court, they transport you from the east side to downtown to go to court at KCJ because it's adjacent to the courthouse. But KCJ is cool. The food's better, and uh, you know you've got a view of downtown. Like you can see the river and all the buildings and stuff. And uh, in the penal farm on the east side where I was at, the windows are frosted with the frosted spray paint from the outside, so you can't see anything. You know, it's just it's a real shitty jail. Um, but you know, after about three or four months. Um, my lawyer, you know, the feds eventually pick it up. <clears throat> my lawyer, I start meeting with my federal uh, attorney. And uh, she basically uh, put in a motion to get me out on pretrial release um, through the Bail Reform Act. Um, and, you know, the, the prosecutor, the assistant U.S. attorney fought that. They didn't want to let me out. They said I was a flight risk because, uh, because I was originally from Florida. I was living in Knoxville at a hotel, so I didn't have an address at the time. I was set up by an informant in Cleveland, Ohio, and they heard from him that I was dealing counterfeit money to other people in Atlanta and Detroit and other people in Cleveland. And so basically, the U assistant U.S. attorney said I was a flight risk. There was hundreds of thousands of dollars that was unaccounted for. Um, I didn't have an address. I was traveling multiple states they they so they tried to fight it but my lawyer uh you know fought it in court and ended up winning and i uh got out on pretrial they basically fought and said because of the bail reform act he's a non-violent no gun charges no violent charges no drug charges um you know come from a good family and they basically said i want rehabilitation so it was conditions of my release to go to center point rehab for 30 days and then directly from there to a halfway house so with that, the judge granted it, and uh, they they let me out on pretrial. Um, yeah, I could tell uh, some more stories about, uh, you know, making the the training video for the Secret Service while I was out on pretrial release, and uh, you know, once I got to the compound in Lexington, Kentucky. See y'all.